It's Adam Hirschfelder from the California Historical Society. Hello, brother. How are you, Adam? Oh, my God. Time of my life. Hello. And it's all captured. It's a great evening. Great evening. Big part of the kickoff of what we're trying to do here in the Bay Area. Why now? Why is this important? We're losing our shot here. We'll ask that again. Okay. Why now? Why is this important? Oh, a couple reasons. I mean, to be here on the day 50 years after the human being, it's really the day that changes everything uh, in San Francisco and then, of course, California and then the world. So you have to recognize from a historical sense the importance of the day. Tune in, turn on, and drop out. <laughs> Very much so. And uh, we're all here to recognize the importance of this day and then what the day led to. And uh, that's just as important as the day is uh, the power it had uh, in the city, the state, the country. Uh, so it's, great. it's just great to be part of it tonight. Well, and I love the fact that you are in the domain of historical context. You're, you're with the California Historical Society. And that's what this is about. It's history, but it's about keeping the history relevant. Yeah, I mean, this is living history. And uh, uh, people feel so close to it. Uh, it's, and uh, it's great to talk and to celebrate and honor a history that people are still very attached to. And when you're at an event like this, what's amazing is it's a mix of people who are there and then people who are inspired by it. Uh, and that's when you really can really do the most with history, when you have people there who are touched by it and people who are inspired by it. And that's what's really inspiring about tonight. So where do we go next? What, what, what does the movement need to do now? We got to keep building the energy out here around the 50th anniversary to show people care. I think a lot of people want to either not take it seriously or dismiss it, but we have a unique opportunity here to keep the energy, to keep the building the crowds of people interested in it, celebrate all the positive things that happened, recognize the historical importance of what happened uh, after January 14th, 1967, and make sure people know we know why it's important. And that's uh, the funk, that's what we all have to do as individuals and as a collective. Well, I think if it's really all about an awakening of consciousness, a shift of per perspective, then these are the, the people who are here from 50 years ago are the ones who had shifted their consciousness. They opened their minds to new possibilities that are impossible to see when you're mired in a paradigm you don't understand. And so they're, they're still around and we, the younger generation, are influenced by them. That, that spirit of opening consciousness is still alive for sure. Exactly, I mean, in some respects, I feel it's our responsibility, me and you, to carry this on. It'd be easy not to look back, but it's really, really important for those of us uh, to build on the history, to stand on the shoulders uh, of those people who were there in 67 and those who have tried in different ways to keep it alive for uh, many years. It's really our responsibility to do so. Well, I pledge to uphold my responsibility to help keep the dreams of the love movement and the summer love alive. Likewise, me too. Well, you know at Soul, we always love to rap with a hug. I gotta duck down because I'm so... You're oh. really tall. Okay. <laughs> I got Honey here, who was Bill Graham's first secretary, and um, we're so happy to be here. Oh, I love being here. It actually, um, when the first being happened, I had already worked for him for a year. It was 66 to 68, and we were in the front row at the first human being. It was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How come it's still alive? How come after 50 years, we can still sell out an, a being? I'll tell you why, because there was, it was a renaissance in music, it was a revolution politically, and um, there's so much history, which is global, it's all eyes are on San Francisco, and that's why. All eyes are still on San Francisco, and what's the message we're spreading? 
peace and love. That's about it. What, what, else, what else are you going to say? I know. Spread? I'm on the planning committee for the 50th anniversary of the Summer of Love in Golden Gate Park this summer. I'm on that committee. The big free concert. That's the one. You got it, June. We're all over that. I know. Yeah, June, we're super excited. June 4th. Okay. Yep, we just got our permit yesterday. Congratulations. We're so happy to hear that. I know. Yeah, it's on. It's, it's so on. on. It's, on. <laughs> it's so on. This year is exploding. Isn't it's it? It's exploding. They're talking about us in Europe and in, in England. I know, it's true. And there are Russians here tonight. Are there? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, it's on. Yeah, no, it really is. Yeah. It really is. The love message is so alive. And, you know, I love that there were people along the way who said, oh, the hippies failed. They didn't, what did they oh, accomplish? Nah. We're, it's still here. I can't say we because I'm only 46. I wasn't there. <laughs> nah. But it's still on. The phenomenon, the, the, That's right. the vibe, the, that, that level of consciousness of people actually caring. And oh, actually putting their actions where their hearts no, are. No, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. We never stopped. Yeah. And now it's more important than ever. You know, couldn't happen at a better time. <laughs> exactly. And here we are doing and our here job. Here we are. Well, I sweetheart, know. it's so good to talk to you. And you know, at Soul, we always love to wrap with a hug. Uh, yeah. Looky who we found our lovely Leah from Hempstead Project Heart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's so nice to meet you. Are you having a nice bee? Are you having a nice bee? Fabulous <laughs> time. This is so great. Yeah. Why is it so great? You know, I was here. I was at the human being. What was it? 1967. You must have been there. <laughs> 50 years ago, I was definitely there. It was fabulous. Yeah. And I'm so happy to, that they're doing it again, and that that spirit still lives on here. Well, what know? was the spirit? What was the magic then? You know, I think it was just being together and being, you know, free and dancing to the music and being so free and dancing like we did. And, you know, it, and the music was amazing. And so it was just the spirit of the whole thing. Well, I love that, too, because, you know, music is vibration. Music is just, it's in our DNA to, to feel rhythms and vibrations. Yeah. Everything's vibrating in the universe. And music just sort of sets a tempo for it and gives a groove to it. Yeah, it if sure it's does. it's vibrating and, anyway. And to be together. Yeah. I mean, there were so many of us. It was powerful. It was that feeling of, of being very powerful. We were flower children. You know, we weren't hippies yet at the human being. We were still flower children, and that's how we saw ourselves, you know, and peace and love and, you know, being free and expressing ourselves and being beautiful. <laughs> is it still alive today? Um, I think it is. Of course it is. Where and do I we think go next? I think it's re-emerging, yes. in fact. Where do we go next? But what do we do with it? in a different way. We expand. We, we change things. You know what, you know what they, the young people have today that we didn't have? We're parents like us. You know, I mean, they've got, yeah, parents and grandparents who, you know, live through that time and who have that spirit. And support what we're doing if yes, it's proactive. exactly. So, yeah. you know, there's much more going on in that way. Yeah. You know what I love to think about is that think how, you know, people die, generations die off and die off. And, you know, the Beatles came along in, in the early 60s and they said, we are the first thing to come along now that's bigger than Jesus. Right? Yeah, Everyone knows the Beatles. Everyone knows all you need is love, right? Yeah. And now we're at that point where enough have di a generation have disappeared that most everyone left on Earth gets it, right? Uh, well, hmm, I hadn't looked at it quite like that. But you I think see? that what also the Beatles brought in was the idea of spirituality. You know, the Maharishi Yogi. You saw it in our short film. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody then wanted to go to the East and then made their journey to the East, which, uh, you know, I did too with a group of people and yeah. found our, our spiritual teachers and studied with them, you know. And that's remarkable that so many people have these spiritual practices over the years. And yeah, we went out, we had to make money, we lived our lives, we went on, we had children. But we still have this idea of the spiritual practice that you know, we can still, the, the idea of meditation, the idea of that kind of thing, it's remarkable, really. The that, idea of connecting with something larger than ourselves, yes, whatever it. it is, whatever you want to call it, yeah. just connecting to something that is bigger than us, ourselves. Exactly, than one exactly, human. yeah. And that isn't, you know, some kind of, of religion, but is in fact, a, a, you know, a way that we can have a connection ourselves. It's internal. So, Right. It's internal. It's personal. It's, yes, Very exactly. Personal. So what we have are, in fact, this, these generations, you know, but it's an expanded consciousness now. 
and it's still like a spiral. Everything spirals around and comes back around, but in a higher level. You know, we're dealing with just, first of all, a much huger population. Think about it. Three times the amount of people are on the planet right now than we're then. Is it two or three? But anyway, a lot more people, yeah. you know. So the first doing. summer love was nothing compared to what this year is going to yeah. be. Yeah, ooh, yeah, baby. The summer of unconditional love. There you go, one of our biggest fans. Thank yeah, you. I love that idea. The yeah. idea of unconditional love has to be understood. You know, that's the love we're talking about. Mm, we thank you, Harold Becker, for that message of unconditional love. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, and at Soul, of course, we always love to rap with a hug. We're here with our new friend, lovely Annie. Hello, Annie. Hello. Why are you here? What are you doing at a being? It's a great question. I'm being. I'm being. What else could we do? What else could we do? That's what we do. I'm actually here. My friend's partner is playing tonight. So I showed up and thought I would feel this awesome space and all these people. Does it feel awesome? It does. What do you know about Summer Love? Well, when I was younger, I wasn't there for it, but when I was younger, I watched a documentary on VH1 called The Drug Years. And I was like 12 or 13, and I just knew there was something to this culture and this time period that felt so resonant and important. And I was like, I was born in the wrong decade. And then I feel like maybe I lived through it, and I just came back around. And here you are now. And here I am now, so getting maybe a you're taste. Exactly when you were exactly. supposed to be. Exactly. You know? I think that that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So where do we go? We're the next generation. We weren't there, but we're going to be here for a while. Absolutely. What do we do with this this momentum? Well, I think that what's different about this generation is where this the '60s they had this like burst of consciousness, but they didn't have the infrastructure to sustain it and create a thriving world with it. But it was like a catalyst, and then it kind of fizzled out, and there was so much divide of like new consciousness versus old paradigm. But now there's so many more people and so much more technology and consciousness about it. So it feels like it's grounded. And it's, it's actually, a, it's a similar flavor, but it's more refined and it's more attuned and it's... Like we can do this. It, it we is, learn it, from it, them. It's happening. Because we are, we are doing it and we did yeah. learn from them. And, and that seed they planted, yeah. it's going, it's Oh here. yeah, absolutely, it's here. Yeah, and we have the technology, mm -hmm. the social networking yes. capabilities, yes. and the ability to articulate yes. the message yes. in a, such a concise, yes. specific way. Right. It's a simple love message. Yes. It's awakening, a shift in consciousness, yes. a collective deep breath, yes. a massive group hug, yes. and let's figure this out. Totally, <laughs> and we're going into the systems and using it there versus being against, right? It's kind of coming in into it all rather than, there's not as much, of, but there you could argue that there's totally versus energy still, you know, opposing energy in our society right now. Okay. But it feels a little different, I don't know. I tell you, personally, I can't think of one thing that I'm against. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> there's a lot of beings that are versus, you know? But yeah. Yeah, well, let's- Maybe this energy is less versus though. You know, Absolutely. where the 60s energy was kind of like a versus thing. We're more like standing and anchoring light and inviting people into that vibration. Let's say this. Their response was, hey, we're not going to do that. Yeah. And our response is, hey, we're going to do this. Exactly. It's about what we exactly. can do. Exactly. That's it. Yeah, That's we, the we, reason. Look, we say, simply say, if we're willing to drop the distractions, get off the couch, and work towards creating that world yes. that we want to live in, whatever that looks like yes. to any individual in our heart, right. what can we do to go do it? And that's what we want to we want to find out and we want to share that message. So beautiful. What can we do? What can we do? Yeah. I think it's really like asking your soul, taking time to get quiet and saying, what is it that brings me alive? And can I do that? Can I bring my joy and my purpose to this earth knowing that there's something for me here to do? And that's all, that's all we're here to do is, is like be in our highest joy and our most authentic expression of our soul. That's it. It's beautiful. Yeah. I can't think of a better segue because that soul, we always love to rap with a hug. We've finally managed to break our dear friend Michael Gosney away from his duties running the show around here. 
Hey, happy being, man. This Thank is you, it. man. It's awesome. We're here. Thanks for your contribution. Oh, we're so glad to help support this. Such an important cause to keep alive. It is, and your addition of unconditional uh, is a, a welcome uh, amplification of the concept of Summer of Love. Yes, absolutely. And if look, if love is infinite, why not just make it unconditional too? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to put a condition on something that's infinitely available? That, just, that makes no sense. That's correct. So if it's love, it's unconditional. If it had a condition, there was probably a tail of taint to the love. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so why are you doing this? Well, you know, it's just uh, because I had done the digital BN for many years. We did 16 of those events, Ooh. which were uh, honoring the human being, but uh, really as a reflection of the 90s, uh, uh, more evolutionary uh, activities uh, in the cyber world and bringing the values of the 60s into that milieu in the uh, early 90s. And uh, through that process, uh, I was delighted to become acquainted with Chet Helms and Alan Cohen, who co-organized the human being, and I did meet uh, Michael Bowen as well. The guys um, behind Tim the Oracle Timothy, newspaper. Tim, yeah, Timothy Leary became, he and I became good friends. He was, that most people don't know that Tim's last phase of his life, and you know, he had many Tim Learys through his journey here yeah. on Earth, and the last one was a cyber, cyber Tim. He was a fantastic, enthusiastic proponent of the digital media revolution, and he had a constant drumbeat of humanistic. What does technology do for us as humans? Yeah. It's, it's, it's got to be thought that way. And he actually made a great contribution to the early emergence of the web, uh, which we feel uh, really reflects the Bay Area in particular, the, the culture here, uh, in how there was a open and, and uh, really unrestricted concept uh, to the digital media uh, over the World Wide Web. And uh, so, anyway, we, uh, uh, Bill McCarthy of the Unity Foundation, who's been at this for many, many years, and he produced some of the earlier uh, Summer of Love 30th uh, and uh, 40th events. Um, he called me up several months ago and said, Hey, would you like to collaborate? Let's do something on the 14th. And I said, Okay, let's go for it. And uh, that's what we've done. And we brought a little element of the digital bee in here. We've got a uh, a demonstration room with some of the really thoughtful new applications. We're looking for the creativity and the, the more, uh, again, humanistic applications in the new uh, virtual reality, mixed reality world. And uh, so we have a little taste of that here. We are planning a digital BN, full on, bigger cyber event uh, for June in San Francisco. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, this is just actually a little bit overwhelming how how wonderful this event is. We really uh, attracted both the, uh, the BN generation here, many who actually were at that event, as well as three other generations uh, are, are, are here. Here we are in the middle. <laughs> yes, we are, yes. And uh, so uh, I'm really glad you guys are here. And uh, we've got, uh, you know, I think a lot of work to do ahead, uh, but people are very uh, ready to evolve. And uh, many, many initiatives uh, adding up to some positive change, so. Bring on the initiatives, man, Absolutely. bring them on. We love it, we, yeah. it's high time and we're ready. Yeah, I think so. The shift is upon us. Dr. David Smith, the founder of the Haight-Ashbury Free Medical Center. How are you? Hi. How are you? We're so grateful to you. I mean, talk about the, the altruistic heart, the spirit of practicing medicine. You embody it. Thank you, yeah, that summer of love, great event. Uh, I was an observer, but I got very involved in the psychedelic culture and uh, started to live the free clinic spirit. I, I actually got the term free from the diggers, Peter Coyote, and uh, the architect of healthcare is a right, not a privilege, but it was Bill Graham and all the, these bands. Many of these bands on the stage had benefits for us. The Big Brother and the Holding Company, and uh, all the, uh, the Grateful Dead, and this one of Gaysa Cups, Dr. Sunday's Medicine Show, so it's a wonderful event. And I think you're going to be the beneficiary of some of the um, proceeds from tonight's event, too. Yeah, proceeds and the spirit. Yeah, yeah, the spirit. You, you deserve the spirit. So, why start a free medical clinic? Well, it was the times, uh, basically, as I shared, uh, we saw all these 
young people flocking in with all sorts of medical problems and drug problems. When we went to the city, and the city said, now we don't want to take care of them, we want them to go away. And I had just gotten caught up into the, you know, the, the, the Mississippi Freedom Riders and the prejudice and the discrimination. And that was really what the Summer of Love did for me. So that's when I went to the health department and said health care is a right, not a privilege, you can't deny services. But the free came out of uh, the diggers. Let me ask you this, why aren't there already a million free medical clinics all over the world and what do we have to do to make that happen? Well, there was an explosion of these types of clinics in the late 60s and into the 70s. And then it, the spirit of uh, uh, healthcare got encoded into Obamacare, which was wonderful, but now you have uh, the current president is trying to destroy the health care reform. So, I mean, that's why you need this spirit, which is now more than ever. Spirit of love. Yeah. Do you agree with Bernie Sanders? Health care is a human right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to have this big society with all the trappings, collect taxes, pave roads, can't we at least like well, take Bernie, care of ourselves? Bernie was the one that encoded it the most. Yeah. And he, he sure had did. a philosophy, and now we're actually uh, some, you know, we're the center of the loyal opposition now. I, as opposed to being oppo as opposed to being opposed to anything, I'm for all these wonderful things that we're doing to bring more love in the world, take better care of ourselves and each other, and that, nurture life on Earth. Because I believe that's what it's going to take to create the world we want to live in. That's why we're here. The alternative society, alternative approach. Let's try something else. Yeah. <laughs> this one's clearly not working. Right. Now, that right. Fukushima water is getting closer every day, right? Right. Got to find something else. I agree. We love you. We appreciate what you Thank do you so much. much. And we're going to come and see you and do a, a, a deeper piece on your whole place. Right. And at Seoul, we always love to rap with a hug. We are here with famed guitar player Terry Haggerty from Sons of Champlin, Don't Push the Clown, and God knows how many other projects. Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Oh, there you go. There's a famous one. It's so great to have you here. What an exciting night. Um, okay, so 50 years since the Be In, the Summer of Love. What, what stands out the most after 50 years? Uh, let's see, after 50 years, how much we need the energy of the BN right now. Yeah, we are all over that. This is a testament to that, this sold out event here in San Francisco. We are carrying the torch here at Seoul, keeping the message of the love movement alive and, and spreading it as far and wide as we can because the time is now. What started 50 years ago now spreads like wildfire, right? It does, it does. And the energy of the BN was such an amazing thing. I remember with the Sons, we all went together because our manager was the art director for Gary Snyder's books, and they put on these shows called Mandala Mandalographies. So we had just finished like backing up bands like the Righteous Brothers and having our own hairstylists, and all of a sudden we took LSD and we're in Golden Gate Park, hanging out with Gary Snyder and like all the beat poets, just like going, oh my God, this is this is everything. This is everything we wanted and we never knew it even existed. And now we can play anything we want to play. We don't have to play all this straight music anymore. So yeah, what was it about that moment? What, what, would, what was that shift? What changed in that, in that experience? I don't know, but I wasn't a very good guitar player before I took LSD and when I took LSD, in about six months, everything changed. All of a sudden, I just all of a sudden caught on fire and the guitar started playing itself. It was just the nature of having such a big bulk of group consciousness and everybody connected. Jay! Oh my God! <laughs> hey, brother! Welcome to the party! Come on over, give us some hugs! Oh my God! Here is the most influential person that's still living in my life. This is the I most know. amazing human. Love you, love you, love you. <laughs> you know what? I had always hoped I was going to see you again. Oh, 
Well, here I am. Oh, man. That, that's, <laughs> you must, your flute playing must just be fabulous. Well, it's, it's okay. You know, I was on the, um, the, the, when the, when the, when the, 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 the flight behind the moon came, they had a picture of me on the, on the Harvard Bridge playing my recorder. I was playing a recorder when when the um, you, you know when the when the when the, the, the thing went behind the moon uh -huh. and they didn't have any tape of the moon. They played me. I was a kid, right, uh -huh. on the Harvard Bridge, um, uh, on the, it, it, play, playing my recorder, and and, uh, and it, it's on the tape. I don't know if they they probably cut it years ago, but I tell you what. I would kiss your feet right now. <laughs> oh, oh no 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 oh, no! You don't no. want to do that. I I I have a I have a cold. <laughs> I'd be honored to get your cold. My my, my feet my feet run. My my nose runs and my and my feet stink. So <laughs> no, my feet smell. That's the joke. I got the joke wrong. You know what we were talking about? We were talking about going with bread to the human being after we just met Gary and he was doing all the mandala monolography stuff and how amazing you guys were to us inconceivably far out human beings and we were so young <laughs> and to be able to say that 50 years later and feel the same way the reverence the reverence much love I'll let you I'll let you I didn't get my hug yet oh my the stage, I said, he's just like we were. He is, you see that? Like we, were. we are here to carry this torch no, no, no. I, on. I, I saw him. It's like, it, it's, you're, you're the, he's the same as we were then. Every, yeah, everybody else looks James older. but most incredibly handsome guy. He really like sharp, amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's so funny. It's like, that's kind of long, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Down man. to here, you know. I got, I got just out of my backyard. I picked about a thousand psychedelic mushrooms. I got them in a big bag here. So you got I got to get. I got right here in a oh bag. Oh my god! Yeah. So two, two o'clock might be hopping. Yeah. No, I got them. <laughs> the after so, um, party's going to be great. <laughs> okay. I'm on the way to get some drink. I'll okay. let you. I'll Good let man. you continue. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Much love, Rum. <laughs> the magic. There's no that's shortage of summer of love miracles around that's here. Unbelievable. He is he is friends with all the most amazing people. Oh, it's just all the most amazing people. I mean, that it was such a circle of, of folks. And, uh, so lucky to have met them. You know? Aren't we all? We're, that's why I feel we're so lucky to be here, to be even aware of this. How many people in this world aren't even aware that we're doing this, that love is alive, that we mean it, and we're living it? Yeah, no, it's that's the truth. <laughs> Big time. Big time. God, we thank you for years, uh, decades of amazing, fun music and enriching our lives with that and keeping the spirit of the love movement alive. It's a timeless, infinite, long arc. Yeah. And love, love, love. If love, love, love is love. infinite, there's no shortage. Yeah, no, just get some cojones and just really, you know, come with the unconditional thing. <laughs> unconditional, yeah. All right, well, look, at Soul, we always love to rap with a hug. So this is really important uh, right now in San Francisco and, and United States. This is the love revolution going on, the summer of love. So that's what we need now more than ever with this stuff is going on. I'm not going to name anyone. So this is all good vibes, all positive, all loving, caring. This is what we need on the planet right now. I love what you're saying about not aiming it anywhere because, yeah, there's nothing to aim. If what we're doing is creating something new, there's nothing to aim. There's just to do, right? Yeah, we're expanding. We're like, you know, sharing what we have. It's already there. We don't create it. It's just there. I'm glad you said sharing, too. And that is one of the core ideals of the love movement from the get-go is sharing. Sharing. Sharing is caring. Yeah. We have a wonderful segment in our short film about sharing, and it is about caring. Yeah. And it's great because that's one of the messages that seems to keep getting passed on to every generation. Every little kid knows sharing is caring, right? So if we can just keep that at, at the prominent forefront of our thinking and everything we do, are we sharing? Are we caring? You know, all in life is about sharing. It's about symbiosis. You know what I mean? It's all about what we... Um, give and what we receive so it's the life force it's 
what nature gives us, what we accept and what we give back. So it's, you keep the spin spinning. Where, where do we go from here? Where, where does the movement go? What do we need to do next? Keep sharing, keep speaking up, keep going to the streets, keep creating, keep being you, and just reveal your true self. So don't be afraid of just being you, you know? Uh, that's why I created my love revolution, to share. And it's only 40 years young. I never say old, I say young. And you know, it's shared all over the world. I have 3,000 followers. No, 300,000 followers. So I have to make that clear. Where do we find out more? You can go to my website, Jill Love Revolution, J-I-L, Love Revolution. Jill Love Revolution. Dot com. Good, we're going to go there. Well, you know, at Seoul, we always love to wrap with a hug. Thank you so much. You look pretty, too. Thank you. We're here with our friend Mona Lisa at the Human Being. Hello. Hello. Why are you here? Why do you care? The 50th anniversary of the Human Being is the 50th anniversary of an event that occurred to represent seekers and the passing of the torch of the beat generation to a yet unnamed generation. So the terms hippie and all that, that was stuff that came during and later, but it wasn't, it was a contextual thing. And at the time, 50 years ago, there were seekers here. And today there are seekers. As Allen Ginsberg called them, the seekers, youth looking for a better world than their parents knew. That's right. Yeah, we say that in our short film. <laughs> The quote's fresh. So exactly, that is why we're here. That's and why we're doing this. And still coming. You know, when I first got to San Francisco, I came and I volunteered as a public defender. Oh, boy. And I represented sometimes. Beauty and brains. I remember one beautiful young man from the middle, Midwest, and he had encountered someone with a tie-dye shirt on Hayden Ashbury. We had bust into there. and. And the man said, hey, do you know where I can get some weed? And just to be friendly and helpful and brotherly, he knew someone who had some weed. And he said, hey, yeah, I can get you that. And he goes, oh, yeah, well, can you get me some mushrooms? And he said, yeah, yeah, I know somebody has some mushrooms. And he went and helped. It turned out that was an undercover cop. And this 18-year-old beautiful boy, he had this, like, mushroom hat. He was, like, big Michael Jackson hats. And he was probably, like, 99 pounds soaking wet. And this was one of my clients, and they were throwing the book at him because he had mushrooms that he, he didn't even profit it wasn't or anything. Even him, he yeah. was just helping yeah. someone to turn on, and that that process is still underway. People need us to care. We like to say, if everyone helps one person, we all get the help we need. Compassion. Yeah. It comes down to compassion. And so that kid represented a, a movement of people who come here seeking. And they come sometimes with nothing in their pocket, and they're coming seeking something. They're seeking something, and they're seeking just a safe place to be in community and to share and to work hard. And that's what the Woman Festo is about. So tonight, tonight I read the Woman Festo, but you can also find it online on the Human Being website. It's, um, it's basically a consolidation of everything that you would find in the United Nations um, International Declaration of Human Rights, as well as a little bit of extra labor law and feminist law mixed in on one page. And it just talks about what each of us, by being born into this world, is entitled to. Oh boy, unalienable rights. That's right, that's Bring right, it on. the right to love. Absolutely. So, um, where does this go next? What do we do with it? How do we accelerate the shift? I think the beginning of accelerating the shift is by recognizing the feminine divine and understanding that a lot of what happens in society is happening under this really effective bureaucratic system 
that bureaucracies are powerful. When humans figure out bureaucracies, we figure out, oh, you can make a bridge, you can make a skyscraper. You and I and all our friends can't make a skyscraper or a Golden Gate Bridge. It takes real bureaucracy. It, it takes people who are willing to work somewhere, and when they're told something, they're told, jump. You don't ask why, you ask how high. So bureaucracies are powerful, but when bureaucracies are led by corporations, by, by sociopathic constructs that have no humanity and have no compassion, then we have horrible things like the industrial food complex, mass incarceration. Rape and destruction of the earth and That's environment. Right. So plus the humans. Right. right Endless right. human suffering. Let's get them sick so right. they can spend money on the health care to boot. So, we'll get them coming and going. So ending corporate personhood, identifying the actual real right for every human being to have clean air, clean water. Food, the right to work, maybe education. even healthcare. Like if we're going to have a society, net and neutrality, pay taxes. access to the internet. Okay. You know, there's so much. And so even though it's it's a really it's a dense one page statement, it, the woman manifesto really does encapsulate that. The woman manifesto. I just read that today. The woman manifesto. Thank right. you. Okay. Perfect timing. Yeah. Synchronicities galore it's around time. here. Not to mention all the green lights. So we thank you so much for your spirit, your enthusiasm, your contribution, and your message. And at Soul, we always love to wrap with a hug. We're so grateful for you being here performing tonight, yeah. singing for us. Yes, it was wonderful, wasn't it? Sharing your love vibrations. Oh, thank you. And, so, and Soul. And Soul, your soul with <laughs> us, yeah. Big Stone Ground fans and oh, fans great. of your music and performance for all these decades and decades. Yeah. Exactly, huh? So, so why, why do you keep doing it? Why, why is this scene important? Because I love singing, and my mom used to tell me that if I didn't use my voice, that God would take it away from me. So what are you using it for? Just singing. I say I have a, my own band, the Annie Sampson Band, and I'm in a band called uh, the Blues Broads with, uh, with uh, Tracy Nelson, Angela Straley, Dorothy Morrison and I have a band. It's called the Blues Bros. So I'm still doing that. And I sing in my church choir. Of course you do. You're not going to be in church and not sing in the choir. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, we want to know, you've been in the, in the, in the scene and the movement for so long, since mm -hmm. way back. And uh, where do we go next? What can we do now to help bring this message of love to the world that's so desperately needed? Well, love will find a way. <laughs> I mean, you know, we'll find a way. That's Pablo Cruz, and they were in Stone Ground. I know they were. If not for Stone Ground, no Pablo Cruz. That's right. Yeah, you can't find your place in the yeah, sun if yeah. Stone Ground. I think that people have to, we're going to have to turn to God because the world is going in a very uh, low way. You know, everyone, everyone has to find love because love is the only, I mean, really serious, love is the maker of the universe, you know. So I, I think God is in control and it's gonna be all right. You know what I love is that when you think about people undergoing extreme hardships and you look through history, like imagine people in a concentration camp, right. oh, imagine yeah, people yeah, in a yeah. internment camp, imagine right. Africans just coming right, over on, right. the, on the boats. Right. Imagine, um, you know, any of these people who were just, the Irish. You know, all of them. I mean, all you know, the Syrian refugees right yeah, now, just yeah, on and yeah. on and on. And here, to have people like us in a mm. position of such privilege mm -hmm. and, and such such comforts in life right, and, and right. such confidence in our security, right. of getting our needs met, right? Exactly. And that our hearts are still bleeding. Yeah. That's saying something. Right. Like, if, we, if we're doing fine and we don't care about anyone else, okay, that you would expect. Yeah. But we're doing fine, but we care. Yes. That's, that's, that's saying what that the matters. world needs our love right that's now. That's right. We've got to spread the love around and let people know that it's not all gone, you know? I think people have become so involved in machines until they've lost the connection with one another, you know? I think I'm writing this song and one of my lines is, the Statue of Liberty is crying. That's one line from my song. She's crying, you know? So, but it's gonna be all right. I'm very positive. I'm sure everything's gonna turn out fine. <laughs> It's a beautiful I appreciate segment. you guys. Well, we appreciate you, and we look forward to seeing you at many more events all throughout yes, this year, commemorating yes. 50th anniversary. Yes, yes. And for now, at Seoul, we always love to wrap with a hug. Uh -huh.
We're here with our new friend Milton, more commonly known as Turtle. How's it going, Turtle? It's been an awesome day. Yeah. We were in the polo fields at noon and we had a beautiful free gathering. People read poetry, they sang, they made music. It was a beautiful day in Golden Gate Park. At one o'clock when the 50th anniversary occurred, we joined hands and we prayed. We honored the time. And in honor of the time, it's time for us to go further. And by going further, you open up your heart and you create music, art, dance, and literature. We do that every year in Venice, and I just was told I have my new dates for this year. So I want to invite you all to the beach to come celebrate. It's free. It's along the boardwalk. It would be May 20th will be the Venice Spring Fling 7. And August 26th will be Venice Beach Music Fest 12. We have music, we have belly dancers, we have samba dancers, we have fine artists, we have photographers, we have authors a sign in. Come to the free events, and if that ain't enough, we've now been told we have our permit for the summer of love. And with great joy, I will tell you that the Merry Pranksters are donating an ex federal prison bus to be painted by the public in the park. Whoa. And it's gonna be ready to go with primer, and we invite you to come and create, and make color, and paint the bus, and turn an object of hatred into an object of love. It's time for us to turn this world around, and the only way you can do it is if you let it shine. Let it shine. Right home, brother. <laughs> so we need to band together now, and we need to have unity, and through the arts, we can talk to the world. God bless you. God bless every one of you. Right on. And at Soul, we always love to rap with a hug. From the human being, we have Sonny from the old Jammin' on Hate store, which is now called Love, love on Hate. Hate. Yes. yes. Thank you for being so awesome and so beautiful. I'm bringing so much color and fun to the scene. <laughs> Why do you have a psychedelic store? Uh, because the Hate Ashbury is the most magical place inside the world. It changed the world 50 years ago, and we're trying to change it for the better for the next 50 years. We're trying to add more love, a lot more sparkles, some rainbows, kindness, and a whole lot of peace. And I don't know many people in this city who give more sprinkles, rainbows, love, and peace than Sunny. Well, I do smell good. That too. So. <laughs> What's it gonna take? What's it gonna take to shift the paradigm? In one sentence, what's it gonna take to shift the paradigm finally, once and for all? If you can change yourself, you can change the world. We need to shift our attitudes and really put love and our community and everyone as equals. And once we do that, we're gonna be okay, but we really have to solve some problems and it's about caring about your community. Love and Sparkles, 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 sparkles. Let's bring it on, baby. What a great idea. There you go. It's like the guys at the Love Foundation say, love begins with me. Sonny, at Soul, we always love to rap with a hug. 